muted. Hi everyone, um, thanks for joining today's webinar in the midst of this always busy holiday season. Today, Coach Stephanie and I will be chatting about the benefits of unplugging, specifically the health benefits along with the social benefits of putting the TV remote away, turning off the cell phone, and simply enjoying face-to-face -face communication. Today's agenda really talks about the harm that the overuse of technology and artificial lighting has on, again, both our physical and mental health. So between Stephanie and I, we will dive into the key topics of sleep, stress, and social interactions, or what we like to call going off the grid. So just as a disclaimer though, you may hear some overlapping information from our sleep and stress categories, but that's primarily because sleep and stress are interconnected in so many ways already. So without further delay, we'll start our discussion on sleep. <clears throat> so whenever I speak to participants about their health, I always bring up the topic of sleep. And more often than not, they seemed confused as to why I'd bring up such a topic for discussion. And sadly, the reaction is because sleep is highly underrated, and yet it's one of the pillars of our op optimal health, right alongside diet and exercise. And that is because poor sleep and its side effects can be linked to heart disease, type 2 diabetes, depression, and even obesity. People in today's day and age are not just lacking on the quantity of sleep, so how many hours you're clocking in bed, but also the quality of sleep, so how well your body is rested after sleep. And so, bringing this around full circle, one of the biggest contributors to our lacking sleep habits is the use of artificial lighting and electronics, especially at night. So, as you can see on the bottom there, we have a little food for thought. Um, again, whenever I talk to pr those participants about quality sleep, I try to leave them with some food for thought, which I'll do today. Um, a couple questions is, do you feel rested by the time that you wake up? And does your body naturally wake itself without an alarm clock? If you answer no to either of these questions, then it might be time to evaluate and readjust your sleeping habits for more quality sleep. Next we have blue light, which some of you may have heard this term before, but for those of you who haven't, in regards to today's webinar, blue light, which is part of the visual light spectrum, reaches deep into the eye and can cause damage to our retina. Um, using electronics, specifically at night before bed, emit this blue light, which again tricks our brain into thinking that it's daytime, which can ultimately delay our sleep. How these electronics trick our brains is based around the glow that they emit. So the small amounts of light from these devices pass through the retina in the back of our eye into the part of the hypothalamus, which is the area of the brain that controls sleep activities and delays the release of the sleep-inducing hormone melatonin. So basically, these electronics and artificial lightings are literally messing with the chemicals of our minds and, and are not allowing them to function properly. So touching more on how our bodily functions are getting thrown off by this artificial lighting and electronics, we will dive into circadian rhythm. So everyone has their own circadian rhythm. It's the body's internal clock for sleep. Um, this eternal clock normally follows the sun and the seasons depending on where you live. So this concept can be related to daylight savings time, which the majority of us have recently experienced um, within the last month. Now, daylight savings has really thrown off eternal clocks for most people. Um, and that's because back in the day, 
before we could just flick on a light switch, humans tended to live m much more by the actual sun cycle. Though nowadays, as you are aware, people can stay up late at night, they turn the lights on, which ultimately is going to affect that eternal clock. Um, so that's going to lead to our next bullet here, which is delayed sleep phase syndrome. Now, I'm not going to dive too far into this topic, but delayed sleep phase syndrome, or DSPD, is a disorder in which a person's sleep is delayed by two or more hours beyond the sociably acceptable bedtime. So essentially, with the aid of official lights, um, as you stay up later on a consistent basis, you readjust your eternal clock, and this DSPD sets in. Now your body physically cannot fall asleep until that new set time, whether that time is midnight or 2 a.m. So if you just think if there's a delay in falling asleep, then that can cause difficulty in waking up at your desired time, which goes right back to our food for thought from earlier. So um, if you're able to wake yourself up naturally at the, the desired times or not. Um, my last key point that I'll touch base on today is fight or flight. Now, this is where our topics are going to, of sleep and stress are going to overlap just a tad. Um, as you get stressed, whether it's from an actual threat or even a perceived threat, your body can go into a fight or flight response. And as a result, cortisol, a stress hormone produced by the adrenal gland, is released creating a situation that's hardly favorable to sleep. As our brain rev up from stress, its electrical activity increases and neurons start to race. And this is the exact opposite of what should be happening before bedtime. So as you can see from our seaworthy picture here, I want to put emphasis on the fact that the actual life-threatening danger does not have to be in the room with you for our bodies to produce this hormone. The physical act of responding to a video game or even responding to an email can make your body tense and release this stress hormone. So with that being said today so far about this particular stress hormone, we do have to present you with a disclaimer. And that's because we do need some level of cortisol in our systems. This hormone is life-sustaining, and it's essential to maintaining homeostasis. As you can see on this slide, there is a plethora of beneficial things that this hormone does for us on a regular basis, ranging from influencing our blood sugar or our glucose levels to the contractions of our heart. So keep in mind that stress is merely one reason that cortisol is released within our bodies. What we need to be concerned about in regards to the release of this hormone is the level that it's being released and for how long it's being released. So um, both higher and prolonged levels and even chronically lower levels of cortisol have been shown to have negative effects on our bodies. And so as you can see from the table, only um, as only uh, shows only a few negative side effects while there's a whole, again, plethora of others out there that you can research. Um, and actually, Coach Stephanie will go more in depth about the negative physiological aspects later um, about this particular stress hormone. So again, this disclaimer is that we do need some level of cortisol in our bodies. However, technology and artificial lighting can contribute to those higher and more prolonged levels, which can have the negative effects that we discussed today. Now, here are some recommendations that are more on the category of sleep. Though, don't worry, we'll be giving more tips to help unplug throughout the rest of our webinar today. Um, if you answer, um, so a few of the examples here, if you answer or if you must answer any emails or watch something on TV, then try to expose yourself to the light during waking hours or daylight hours as much as possible. Um, unwind before bed. Have a transition period of about 10 to 30 minutes of technology free time before you should go into your bedroom for sleep. Um, shut down your bedroom. Make where you sleep an electronic free zone. 
according to AOL's third annual email addiction survey, more than 40% of the 4,000 recipients have checked email in the middle of the night. So a tip to help make your bedroom electronic free is to put those um, safety caps over your electronic outlet so to discourage you from plugging in to recharge throughout the night. And lastly, disconnect your kids. As already discussed, a TV in your child's bedroom has a negative effect on sleep quality, going back to our blue light. Um, so give him or her a relaxing book to read before bed instead of the remote. So, and with that, we'll transition over to Coach Stephanie who will chat with us about stress. Thank you, Coach Lindsay. As Lindsay mentioned, we will now be discussing the causes and effects of stress. We all know that plugging in provides a wide array of benefits. It allows us convenience and ease in connection, <clears throat> productivity and efficiency in and out of the workplace, access to our friends and family, old or new, breaking news, weather updates, apps, games, and the list goes on and on. But according to a national survey, 67% of cell phone owners check their phones for these messages, alerts, or calls, even when they don't notice a ringing or vibrating. And 44%, as Lindsay mentioned, have slept with their phone next to their beds to make sure they didn't miss these messages, alerts, or calls throughout their sleeping hours. Sound a bit stressful? Maybe you can even relate. I definitely know I can. Can you identify yourself as a workaholic, a social media addict, or have, you, or have you created a mindless habit of clicking, swiping, and scrolling just because? Whatever your reason, maybe we need to better understand the benefits of unplugging and the consequences of not. The drawbacks. Listed are a few drawbacks if we do remain overconnected to these devices. Consequently, we miss out on life's simple pleasures. So let's take a look at a few of these examples. Decreased physical activity. Think about the last time you spent surfing the web or getting caught up in a TV marathon. Was it worth it? Was there yard work or house chores you could have gotten caught up on? Maybe it was taking your dog for a walk or getting out on that jog with a friend you've thought about. What actions would have gotten you closer to any of your wellness goals? Multitasking. There's great importance in allowing ourselves to be present. May it be at the office or with a family member. Focus on that moment and remain present with the task at hand. Discuss face-to-face. -face. Maintain eye contact. Provide facial expressions and practice good posture. Multitasking almost never boosts productivity and can rather be a form of, pro of procrastination. Anxiety and exhaustion. Oxford English Dictionary added the acronym FOMO in 2013. Most of you are probably thinking FOMO. Yes, FOMO. It is the fear of missing out, and it is defined as anxiety that an exciting or interesting event may currently be happening elsewhere, often prompted by posts seen on a social media website. It explains the need to refresh our Facebook feeds, stay up to date with Twitter, and get one last look at Instagram's latest post, and ensure we never separate from our smartphones for an extended period of time. These constant check-ins on friends, family, acquaintances, strangers, and celebrities lead us to feelings of disconnection and dissatisfaction in our own everyday lives. Combating FOMO may be more difficult for some, but it's definitely doable. Think about it. What is something you have wanted to do for a while now? Maybe it's getting out on that hike, painting a picture for the first time, or getting, book, getting back to that book on your nightstand. What are you waiting for? Go ahead and do it. Okay, so back to cortisol, as Lindsay explained. Um, cortisol is our stress hormone. Whether the stress is physical or psychological, our body is fighting a perceived threat, again known as the fight or flight response. Cortisol, along with another hormone, epinephrine, are released from the adrenal gland when that stressor is presented. In return, you yourself can notice your heart beat faster and your blood pressure rise, but there are far more changes occurring than just those noticed. So not only is our nervous system taking a hit, but so is our musculoskeletal system. An example you may have experienced is that our bodies tense up, leading to headaches or migraines. Our respiratory system is also affected, as we may experience shortened breaths, leading to hyperventilation and at times panic attacks. Our cardiovascular system, as stronger contractions of the heart muscles occur, placing an increased stress on our blood vessels, 
In the long run, this leads to inflammation, which sadly can lead to heart attack and stroke. Our endocrine system is also affected as this cortisol is released. It triggers our liver to produce greater amounts of glucose. The surge in blood sugar is to increase energy in our body if we actually need to fight or flight. Our gastrointestinal system, as stress prompts us to eat more or less than what is typical. It may also increase our use of drugs such as caffeine, alcohol, and tobacco. Stress can also affect digestion and how the way our bodies absorb or don't absorb these nutrients. Our reproductive system. In men, excessive amounts of cortisol has shown to lead to impairment in testosterone and sperm production. In women, irregular menstrual cycles and reduced sexual desire. Understanding the health consequences and identifying the source is key to ensuring our bodies remain healthy and in balance. Weight gain. Repeated elevation of cortisol can also lead to weight gain. One way is via visceral fat storage. Cortisol itself can mobilize triglycerides from storage and relocate them to visceral fat cells. It also aids adipocytes in developing into mature fat cells. Another way in which cortisol may be involved in weight gain is due to the blood sugar insulin response we discussed earlier. Consistently high blood glucose levels along with insulin suppression can lead cells that are starved of glucose. Therefore, these starved cells demand that energy back. And one way to regulate is for our brains to send hug hunger signals. This can, again, lead to overeating and any of those unused glucose is eventually stored as body fat. The last connection is cortisol's effect on our appetite, and more specifically, the foods we crave. Cortisol directly influences receptors in our brain known to stimulate this appetite. As our body calls out for the glucose, we typically reach for those higher calorie foods, sugars, processed carbohydrates, and fats. Think about it. The last time you were stressed, did you prepare a salad full of those dark leafy greens or justify that donut? So how does this relate to our HRA biometric screening? As discussed, excessive amounts of stress wreak havoc on our bodies, whether we recognize it or not. Be proactive to ensure these effects are not seen in your numbers at that upcoming screening. As we discussed, stress influences weight, glucose, and blood pressure, some of our highest valued biometrics. So when it comes to recommendations, here are a few listed to keep us stress-free. Work to get in the habit of keeping your devices in a certain room as opposed to your pocket to reduce that temptation. Enjoy meals, conversation, and activities without the unneeded distraction. Try taking 10 deep breaths before each meal. This can be a time to de-stress and reflect on the positives in your life. And now if we take a look at the upcoming holidays, we'll go ahead and look at a few specific suggestions. Now you may recognize a few of the following as they were presented in a past Live Well, Work Well newsletter. Whether new to you or review, these suggestions are intended to help you reduce stress. Keep up on that quality sleep Coach Lindsay discussed and ensure you are spending time with those that you love this holiday season. Uh, so set a specific time to catch up on emails and reconnect with social media if you must but ensure you don't look back on your holiday season to the memory of phones at the dinner table. And challenge your family to create new technology-free traditions, such as sledding or karaoke night. Remember, you deserve a technology-free vacation. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, I'd say any type of vacation sounds good, but especially a technology-free vacation around the holidays, um, as you've learned from our webinar, can be really beneficial for our bodies. So our conclusion's pretty simple today. Whether you utilize some of the tips and recommendations we gave you today, or if you do your own research, um, but merely putting the technology away this holiday season and spending time engaging in that face-to-face -face interaction with your loved ones. All right, we will have some time for questions here today, but if you, if you do want to contact us, you can always Go to your My Health Check 360 site. You can email us at healthcoach at healthcheck360.com 
Uh, if you want to watch past webinars, go to healthcheck360blog.com. You can follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook, or just give us a call anytime. Uh, a couple notes on the upcoming webinars. January, we will be talking about creating a habit, how to start off the year right by creating healthy habits to last a lifetime. And February, we'll talk about burning fat, how to unleash your body's potential. So again, we will open up for questions. Just one second. Okay, so we do have a question. Um, do reading on tablets and e-readers cause the same effect as checking emails such as tablets? Um, yes, it's still going to emit that blue light. Um, I do believe there are some options that you can dim the light of those e-readers, but it's still going to emit that blue light that's going to reach or go through with our retina and cause problem with our hypothalamus. There's another question um, about intensifying ADHD with exposure to technology. That's a question that we're not going to be able to answer today. Um, uh, if you want to do some research on your own as far as, as studies and stuff, that would be a great way um, to find some things. And, and we can look to uh, and maybe touch on it on a webinar uh, coming up in the future as well. Okay, a great question. How do we get others off Facebook without offending them? Uh, so kind of getting back to some of those suggestions, uh, definitely good to keep base with our family and friends, uh, but leave the conversation by asking if you can get a coffee or get out on that run, that walk. Yeah, anything you can do to, to say, hey, I want to spend time with you, you know, come up with an activity. I don't, I, if people are offended, um, then I'm not really sure how to how to act, but I mean, if you can just say that you want to spend time with someone, you want to have that face to face contact, it's it's going to end up being a positive thing. If you would like a PDF copy of the slides, please email that healthcoach at healthcheck360.com, and we will get you that. Uh, and you can rewatch the webinars, like I said, anytime on our blog, starting within the next couple days. I'll get that up for everyone. All right, looks like we're um, out of questions. So if anyone has any additional things, please contact us anytime. Otherwise, I hope everyone has a great holiday season.